are rolling, you know.
designation, the youngest person in the world to earn Toastmasters' highest designation for excellence in public speaking. Johnny was inducted into Speaker Hall of Fame in 2007. Johnny's ongoing, ongoing mission is to help people overcome the personal and professional obstacles of life so they can have more success, more money, more happiness in their life. Let's welcome Johnny Campbell. He said, well, I've managed people and I've been a supervisor. But I said, 
think about it for a moment. If you're going to be a leader, be a leader where you are an expert at already. Speak to people who want to know about recruiting. Find people who want to learn based on your background. See, I built my career speaking to insurance professionals at first, because that's where I came from. And I say that to think, to think this way. With your careers right now, everybody here that has a career they're working somewhere, there's probably an association associated with your career field. There's probably a trade group associated with your field right now. That's actually where you started. That's where it begins, because that's where you have the most credibility. He wanted to go outside of his expertise. He wanted to go outside and speak to random groups. When he could start off speaking, making good money, speaking to about leadership inside of the recruitment industry. So I say that for you to start thinking, thinking that way. Now, as you can see, well, you may have to dim the lights a little bit in here. Not too much, because then I'll disappear. <laughs> Jane Garvey, she has a real estate group. 
and it's called Creative Investors Group. And I knew that she put on these big seminars every, like the first Sunday of every month. So I went to Jane, and I call this, in my journey, I call this the Johnny Carson effect. What happens is that every time Jane would have a speaker come in, they would come up front, this big time speaker would come up front, the room has got a thousand people in it at the time, and they would speak, but the crowd would be rowdy and rustling. And I remember thinking about Johnny Carson. When Johnny Carson, before he came out, there was another comedian who would come out and get the crowd warmed up and settled. So then I said, Jane, can I be the warm-up guy for 10 to 15 minutes and warm the crowd up? And I said, well, here's the caveat. If I'm no good, I'm only up here for 15 minutes. <laughs> but what if I am good? And I did that for two years to the point that when I came up there, they were chanting for me first. <laughs> They were expecting to hear me speak. And I, what, I, what it did for me was it built my confidence up. I'd already been in Toastmasters speaking, but then I started trying to find places with bigger venues where I could deliver my message. Now here's the catch about Toastmasters that you don't know, is that the 10 speeches, the first 10, is how I built my speech the first time. I created my speech from the first 10 speeches in the Toastmaster night. And here's the catch. I did it in the club, inside my club. A couple of my member, fellow members right there, Barty Keith Barton right there, back then I built it. And it was called Learning to Eat Your Green Eggs in Spain. <laughs> that was my first talk. And I built it one through the first one through ten speeches. And I told everybody in the group, I would say, this is part four of part ten of this speech. And then I would do that part of it, and they would evacuate. So that by the time I left Toastmasters to go out and do that speech, I knew it was great. So I didn't have a lot of money, but I had a lot of will. And I soon realized that that's what it comes down to succeeding in life. It's those that have the will. Sometimes you say to yourself, I don't have enough money, but do you have the will to do what is required? I didn't have a speech coach at first. I had Toastmasters. I didn't go out and hire a speech coach at first. Now later in life, I used speech coaches to perfect my craft and make it even better. But I started with Toastmasters and I became a student. I was a member of more than one club. So I was speaking a lot. I, I got through my DTM in two and a half years because I was moving around clubs and working on it. I served the district, but I continue to participate and keep working. So I want to tell you that you've got the goal right here where you are. You just have to start thinking about it that way. And then finally, I got it, as, as, as the illustration will show. I finally figured it all out, and now I'm going to bring it to you behind the curtain. But do you want the truth? Does everyone want the truth? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You're gonna handle it. You can handle it. Okay. Okay. All right. Don't let the smooth taste fool you. It's kind of rough. The problem. Here's what happens. You worked on your speech. You got your speech now. You say, I want to go off and I want to become a professional speaker. I want to take what I've got and go off and speak to individuals. And the moment you make that decision, you have to make a shift in your mind and how you look at things, and how you see the world. Because suddenly you've got a big problem now. And your big problem has to do with these things here. It has to do with your actual message, who you're really going to speak to if you're going to make a living. It's going to come down to how do you market? It's going to start about the opportunities. These are where the biggest troubles happen for people that want to be professional speakers. They're not clear in these areas. And this is what holds up so many people that have great messages that can impact the world. They don't get clear in this area. And I started really becoming a real proponent of helping people get clear in this area here because once you get clear here, everything else becomes really easy in your business. Everything becomes easy. Your speeches become easier. Things you want to do and create become easier because you finally got clear. And for those that are, and I have people that are currently members of the National Speaker Association, that struggle continuously in the business because they will not make a decision on these things here. They won't get clear. They won't pick where they really should be at because they're afraid to miss out. But I'm here to tell you a little secret about missing out. You really don't miss out when you're clear as to where you want to speak. Now, I spoke for insurance groups continuously. That's all I spoke to because I had <coughs> connections with them and they knew who I was. But because I spoke to them, I got another opportunity to speak somewhere else. And, and suddenly, I was getting opportunities in very unusual places. 
like the National Association for Funeral Directors. Have you ever heard of those before? <laughs> and I did a program for them, and it was called Don't Let Your Marketing Put Your Six Feet Under. <laughs> That's funny, I don't care where you're right? <laughs> And it's not about a book report. 
Audience has paid five to ten thousand dollars to have me come and speak, and they don't want me to go on Google and Google something. They want to hear what do I have to do to get through this from the trenches? What do I have to do to deal with this? So that's why you want to speak from something that moves you, something that inspires you. Next point on there has got to do with the sequencing, the order of things. This right here is another slide that I like to show individuals because it's important about where things occur. When you're going to turn the speech into a profession, you have to think about the problem first. What is the problem that you are trying to solve? Now here's the catch with that. Sometimes people say, is it a problem or a passion? <laughs> it's, it's a problem first. Because what happens is when there's a problem, you become passionate. And if you were ever passionate about something, it's because of a problem. <laughs> so it always ends up being the problem. So you got to think about what is the problem that I am so passionate to help people solve in their lives. You know, when I got a chance to be, and, and, I, and I say chance to be because I wasn't looking for it, but they actually tapped me on the shoulder and said, we would like for you to become the president of the National Speaker Association. <laughs> and I said, are you sure? <laughs> I said, are you sure? And I asked them that, are you sure? Because I said, you know how I am about this. I, if, you, if I'm going to be president, then everybody's going to start making money. I'm, I'm calling for free trade. <laughs> we all are going to make money. Everybody that comes in is going to make money because I'm going to focus the organization so that we are getting more speeches and more speaking opportunities. We're not just sitting around here telling more stories. We're here to learn and earn. <laughs> and so if you want that, then you probably want me to be president. Hence, I'm now president. <laughs> but, so, <laughs> but I just, I'm passionate about that. So I got clear on the problem first. Then I said, what's the problem? What's the problem your group is dealing with? Then what is the audience that has that problem? From that, you go into what product or service can I offer them? Book, tape, or CD? From that, you now create your speech. What happens a lot of times is people create a speech and they're looking for a home for it. I, you ever go to Barnes and Noble? Those books are looking for a home. Somebody just like just writes a book and then and holds it up hoping for someone to buy it. They didn't write that book for anyone. There are very few books in Barnes and Noble that were written for a specific group of people. The ones that are very specific are normally not in Barnes and Noble. They're with that group of people. I've written three books totally for insurance professionals. Never made, never made a bestseller, but it was a bestseller because a whole lot of them bought it. But it will never show up on any Amazon chart because I wrote it for them. And I made more money because I wrote it for them. But I'm just saying you just think about the problem, the audience, the product, then the speech, then the marketing system. How are you going to get it out? And then, of course, media. Next piece on here has to do with systems. When it comes to your profession, I want you to think about these are the two components of it, your presentation and your distribution. That's what it breaks down to in a system. How you deliver your talk and how you get it out to the world. Presentation and distribution. And I learned that from hanging out with a guy named by the name of Bob Sarkasa, which is a TV infomercial guy. I went down to Florida and actually hung out and spent time with him and learned how to be a TV pitch man. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> I'm going to double that order. I'm going to double that order. You got it? You got it? What? Am I crazy? I'm going to triple for that. <laughs> Operators are waiting right now. Call right now. <laughs> you talk about impromptu speaking. <laughs> Our two to three minutes, that, that's a soliloquy compared to these guys. They get up there for 30 seconds, for a minute, and they have opened it, closed it, and made your order. <laughs> Few words, but powerful. And that's what I went to learn. I ended up doing business with the guy. I started learning and actually now, there's some doors that are opening up here in Chicago where I'm going to have actually get a chance to do a 30-minute infomercial and bring people on. And it was all because I wanted to be a student and learn. <laughs> and from learning from him, I now understand how to position things better. And so I soon realized presentation was critical to your success, but also distribution. How will you let everyone know? <clears throat> and this right here, up here, is really my world of distribution. I use all the social media channels to book work. 
But then also I use, I call people, I speak for free, and I use direct mail. I use all these components in a systematic way. Everything feeds everything else. See, this is the part about speaking sometimes they don't talk about to everybody. People talk about all the big money they made, all the stuff that they've done. But then there's this part of it. You know, if, if that 45 minutes wasn't so special to me and so intoxicating, there's no way I would go through this suffering. <laughs> For the, the 45 minutes, when you get to look at people's eyes and you get to share with what you know about it, that's what keeps me hooked in the business. See, I built this business based on my art first, then the business. What happens sometimes is people get into a business, but there's no art. You know, speaking is my art. So from my art, I can do business. But I can never make it just finding some business to get in and then just doing it. I would fail terribly. So that's why it's so important to think about these things. And because of all of the stuff you see here, I'm able to actually be successful because of my heart. All right. Now, what we've done here in our little bit of time, and I appreciate everybody bearing with us here. We're running behind, but let, let me just get, what time do you got? Uh, 10 to 10. It's 10.150 right now, Johnny. All right, I'm going to go 10 more minutes here, and then I'll get out of it. I'll, I'll let it go. But I want to make sure that I answer anyone's questions here about turning their speaking into a profession. So I want to take some questions right now and just answer for you. Okay. Tell us about the uh, National Speaker University that the NSA puts on. Oh, well, inside of NSA, we have what's called Speaker University. And it's a place where those that have an interest in being a speaker, they can attend that training. And over, over, really over the course of six weeks, for this really breaking down to a couple times in a month, like once a month, and it breaks down to. But, it, but in total, it starts to help you become a professional speaker. But it's one class at a time. And one of the things that I want to do, because I am the, you know, because I am the president of it, <laughs> and I can't do it now, <laughs> but I'll be inviting both on it, is that I want to invite everyone in here to come out to a national speakers event and then I will personally slash the entry fee to get in. Normally it's $79, and I'll cut that down. But wait, I'll cut that down. <laughs> and now, because I do want you to come out. I want you to come out to a National Speaker Association meeting, and I'm going to work with the district governor because I want to do more. I want to bridge the gap between us. So I'm going to work with her to bridge this gap and talk to her, probably here or on the phone, and just talk to her about bridging the gap. So that we can do more. Quick question, Jack. Yep. <clears throat> speak for a minute about how you speak for free and still make a lot of money. Speaking for free, making a lot of money, it comes down to products. Then you have to develop courses and materials. Now, simple technique is this right here. Whatever you already know about, whatever you already have an insight into, there's a website called freeconferencecall.com. <laughs> Everyone heard of freeconferencecall.com? Yes. Yeah. You go to freeconferencecall.com, you find yourself a buddy, another speaker, someone that wants to be a speaker. You both dial into that call line and you interview each other. One person interviews first and you ask them 10 questions about what they know, love, and are passionate about and how it can help you. Then you recall back in again and you interview the other person interviews. Free conference call will suddenly download that onto their server. You go there and you can pull that down. Now you have a one hour audio file that you can take and you can burn, you can put a label on, and you can sell for 10 bucks, just like that. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Without really any editing or any alterations to it at first. That puts your knowledge encapsulated and people find value in that. But it's all about what you're going to speak about. <coughs> yep? What does it think about having a home well, absolutely. Actually, my, one of my mentors, and like a father to me, Charles Brooks has a... He is here. Not, I'm not from the word. Father it has Blog Talk Radio, so he does it for his wellness program. So every Monday, whether I'm on the road or not, I get an email note that tells me that he's on the radio right now, or that he's going to soon be on the radio. So Blog Talk Radio is a way to have your own radio show start that process. That's free up until 6 o'clock in the evening. You do a 30 minute program for free on any subject you want to get it on. Yeah. And then they have learning institutions on also where you can actually learn how to do it. So check it out. Yep, so that's another 
Um, there's also a free website called bigmarker.com that does free video conferencing for you. Bigmarker.com. Big Big All right, one more question, and I got I to gotta push. How long did it take you to go from a part-time speaker to a full-time speaker? How long did it take you to quit your job? Well, I didn't quit. I got fired. <laughs> 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 and I got a free job, don't I? <laughs> My job got fired, and then I got fired. They phased my job out. So I didn't have an opportunity to bridge, but I always tell everybody that what I would have done more of was I would utilize my vacation days to go off and speak. So I would have taken vacation days to use that as my way of going off and speak and, 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 as I bridge that gap. And then also, one more thing here, for those of you that are married and would like to stay married, talk to your spouse before you begin this journey. <laughs> Talk to her <laughs> or talk to him because there are ebbs and flows as an entrepreneur and if they are used to working a day-to-day -day job and they see you sitting at home in a lotus position meditating, <laughs> they don't think you're working right now. <laughs> so it's important that they understand the nature of what you're embarking upon. Yep. Johnny, Postmasters teach you how to do pretty much five to seven minutes on a whole. Right. How do you bridge from going to a five to seven minute speech to doing a half hour, an hour uh, presentations? Well, actually, what happens is those messages will teach you the core of developing your talks. At that point, it's your examples, your illustrations, your stories, and your studies that thickens up your program. So then you have to think about what examples, illustrations, stories can I use to build this program up? You can also ask for, you can ask your junior education for more time. Like say for instance, you can have a night in your, your club where you use the only speaker. You want to do a 20 minute presentation, there are an advanced manual, there are some 20 minute presentations. So you can actually work yourself up yeah. to that. And then if you want to do a longer presentation, you can just talk to your junior education and get on. Or go to some club that doesn't have a lot of speakers. Okay. Okay, last thing's on here. Before we go, and, but I'm not going to leave. So if you've got any questions, I'm going to stake out somewhere, and I'll be here to answer more of your questions. But I want to share this because this is important as far as if this is really what you want to do. You know what I've been doing over the last five to six years is doing these small boot camps and trainings on how to be a professional speaker. And uh, <coughs> what I saw when I started out was the cost was so prohibitive; it was just too much money. So I decided to keep the door open to make it where you just have to decide if you want to do it or not. It's not where you have to put it on a payment plan. It's low enough that if you really want to do it, you really want to stick your toe in the water, you're able to. And I'll show you an illustration. This, this is a photo of some classes that I've taught. And as you can see from that, well, I can't see it right up there, but I'm a lot heavier in that photo than I am here today. Just so you know. I started living my own preaching. So that's I'm 40 pounds lighter right now. But I want to help you begin this journey. This journey, this is what you really want to do. And how we get started is I developed these two programs. Now, everyone knows Darren LaCroix, correct? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's my guy. And I, and, and I started realizing that Darren does a lot of programs and different topics, but then I said, where do I fit in this world of Toastmasters to add, even, add more value? And my talks are not from the fact that I won the contest but from the fact that I get paid really good money to speak. And if you want to make the jump, it's about doing certain things, not to win a contest, but to actually win the opportunity. So I created a program that's called Win the Crowd. Because if you think about it, everyone that's ever done anything had to win the crowd first. A politician had to win the crowd. Yeah. If you're a boss, you got to win the crowd, or they're going to, their support is going to be difficult. If you're a presenter, you got to win the crowd. Everywhere you look, you've got to win the crowd before you can get where you want to be. So I created a program around Win the Crowd, and it's where I, it's a one-day training, and it's, now that is the third or second piece of paper that you have in front of you right now. And you can read about it there, where I actually talk about what we're going to do in that day. And I'm going to help you become a better presenter of your content structure. I'm going to teach you how to structure it better so you can create maximum effect on stage, maximum effect in the workplace. And this is about breaking it down and then actually helping you become a better presenter. 
I'll actually have you get up front. This will be, it'll be just a, it'll, it'll be like Toastmasters, but it'll be on like steroids times 10. <laughs> so you're really going to focus in on how to deliver powerful presentations for real results in the real world. The Win the Crowd session, which is on the 28th of July, is 177 to come to that for a full day. And yes, I'll even feed you lunch. <laughs> All right, I know for some people that's sold right there. They show for that. 177 for Toastmasters to come to that. That's the first step. That's the next one is this. Remember, I told you there's two parts: presentation and distribution. So you got to become better at the business of speaking. So the following week, I'm going to do another one day here on the fourth of August. On the fourth of August. I'm going to teach you. Now, everyone saw that free conference call technique I gave you right there? I told an individual in, in, in NSA who was our speaker you to do that, and she ended up on television because of that tip right there. She, she had an interview, and she said, I got something to say, and I got, a, I got a CD on it, and she hadn't even done it yet. But she remembered what I taught her, and then she ran out and did it, then submitted it, then it put her on television. And she was on a major network all because she had a product on that subject. Not a book, a CD. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is show you cost-effective ways to build a business where it's not going to break. And I'm going to provide you with resources that I use that are much more affordable and cost-effective. Where you can actually, if you know what you want to say and you're willing to write a book, we can get your book done in less than 60 days if you actually know what you want to say and write. The production part is easy because I got it all figured out and locked. I got the people that are ready to work. I'm going to give out a bunch of gifts with that as well. Courses, materials, documents. I'll give you all my stuff. Normally it's $6.97. Toastmasters $2.97. So you get one day with me for $2.97. $1.77 for the actual win the crowd. So, once again, like I said before, these are the things that I brought. If you want to stay on my newsletter list, be sure to provide your name and email address so we can stay connected. And then just leave those on the chair in the back there, in the back. We got to make sure you fill out your evaluation form for Toastmasters. And I want to thank everybody for bearing with us here. We're running behind. I want to thank everybody for sticking it out. And always remember this when it comes to love, success, and happiness. The elevator to all of that is broken. But if you're willing to do the work, the stairs are always available.